Hello, and welcome to Junkbotics. My name is Andrew. In the previous video, I showed you a variety of different toy RC vehicles, where you could find them, and what you should be looking for in order to have a good platform to develop your robot on. In this next video, I want to show you the two most common steering geometries, that of Ackerman and that of differential or skid steering. I also want to show you a variety of different drive trains, mainly two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive, differentials versus straight axles, and I also want to show you how you can inspect a vehicle so that you know it's operating properly before you take it home. So let's go ahead and take a look at all those things, shall we? The two most common kinds of steering you're likely to encounter in toy RC vehicles is that of Ackerman steering and that of differential or skid steering. You'll most likely encounter the Ackerman steering in most uh, toy RC vehicles. Um, you generally only encounter the uh, differential or skid steering in uh, certain things like, uh, you know, kind of like uh, this, this uh, small tank chassis. Um, basically, it's your typical, your typical vehicle steering system. You got a steering wheel connected down in below. Well, you know this is a model, so it doesn't have all that. But uh, in a real vehicle, the steering wheel, well, turns the wheels left and right. And uh, we can see that uh, how it kind of works. You can kind of see, you know, turning to that direction and turning the other direction. Um, you know, real basic. That's called the uh, the Ackerman steering geometry is what that's called, and uh, it actually has a uh, a particular there there's a particular reason for the Ackerman uh, steering uh, steering uh, geometry. Um, it basically what it allows for, and you can't really see it on a on a toy RC vehicle, but uh, you know because they aren't really sometimes they aren't really true Ackerman. This is fairly close though. If you rotate it you can kind of see that one wheel is tilted slightly more than the other wheel and the reason this is is because generally the inner wheel that tilts more than the outer wheel is that the um, wheels they track different circles and uh, those circles the inner one is smaller than the bigger than the outer one and so the outer one has to be at a different angle than the inner one in order to keep the uh, tires from essentially rubbing against the ground and uh, ultimately causing more friction and heat stuff like that and wearing the tires out faster. The other one is uh, differential or skid steering and that's basically your typical tank you know basically it's uh, something that uh, whenever the tracks move one way or the other it can rotate you know, it, if one's if, you know if each track is going in different directions at the same speed, it'll rotate in place one way or the other. And the reason why it's called uh, skid steering um, is because, well, the front and the rear, when it's going like this, is actually skidding around the ground. And if this was actually dirt or something, you'd see it actually leave lines. Um, and really, honestly, actual tanks, uh, actual bulldozers, and stuff like that you will hardly ever see them do something like this. Because instead, what you typically see is, and this is where the, the uh, name differential steering comes from, is one track will be moving faster than the other track. And when it does that, it will turn in the direction of the slower track. You know, So if the right-hand side is going slower than the left-hand side, then it'll turn to the right. And same if it'll, you know, turning to the left. Um, and so uh, by varying those speeds, you can get tighter or more gradual circles. Um, and that is, it's called, di it's called differential steering because there's a difference in speed between the tracks. Pros and cons of each of these. Well, number one, uh, I guess the number one pro of differential steering is that it's very easy to control with, uh, with, with, a, with a computer you know, all you have to do is say, okay, make one go faster than the other or whatnot, and it's easy to make it turn. Um, and, you know, there are equations and such outside the scope of this uh, whole tutorial, maybe get into it in a different, uh, in a different video series, I don't know. 
uh, that that describes that uh, that whole uh, the 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 whole um, the whole algorithm and whatnot behind uh, you know if you move one so fast or faster than the other you know what kind of a radius the the um, the vehicle will turn in uh, based on based on the ver based on the very speeds of the uh, tracks. On the other hand. Um, you know things like uh, you know things like uh, Ackerman steering. It's uh, you know it's it's more difficult. It's more difficult to for you know to to do the computation in order to know that okay if I want to get from this point to this other point, um, how do I need to turn turn the steering wheel or you know turn the wheels I guess in order to uh, do that in the proper ways. But there again there are calculations and stuff that uh, can be done. In order for uh, you to be able to, you know, do that, and uh, the interesting thing about that is, is uh, those uh, calculations and whatnot are, well, they're kind of important in self-driving vehicles. So, you know, if you're interested in, you know, building or using or doing some kind of, you know, self-driving vehicle type uh, stuff, you know, on a small scale, then you kind of want to go with a vehicle that has Ackerman steering uh, over that of differential. All right, drivetrains. Well, you basically have uh, two different kinds of drivetrains that you're going to encounter on uh, toy RC vehicles, and that's uh, essentially two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. And in the uh, two-wheel drive variety, and sometimes even on the four-wheel drive variety, you'll encounter what's uh, known as a, uh, a differential or a straight axle. So I'll explain what each one of these uh, things mean and maybe throw up some diagrams or whatnot to help along and links down down in the description of the video. What's two-wheel drive versus four-wheel drive and what's a differential versus a straight axle? Well, let's uh, talk about two-wheel drive. Two-wheel drive is what you see on most cars. Uh, most cars that are sold nowadays, um, they, uh, they basically have unpowered front wheels um, or sometimes they're powered front wheels. Well, actually most vehicle, most actual cars today are front-wheel drive cars. Um, but there will be a, pa a pair of wheels that are driven and a pair of wheels that are undriven. In a front-wheel drive vehicle, a pair of wheels are in the front, they're driven by the engine, and uh, the pair of wheels that are in the rear aren't driven by anything. In uh, most toy RC vehicles, you won't see, uh, you won't see a pure front-wheel drive RC vehicle, not usually. Um, I've never found a, a toy one that was like that. Um, Every one that I've found have been rear wheel drive, uh, front wheel steer. So in that in that situ in that uh, in that uh, thing, we've got your your Ackerman steering here, and uh, then the rear wheels that uh, that turn. Now you know if you notice, I'm rotating rotating this uh, the right the right hand or the passenger side wheel. And the driver's side wheel is turning in the same direction, and in um, you know in sync with me turning the other one. That is called a straight axle. Basically, the axle passes all the way through the gearing, and they're both driven at the same time by the um, by the motor itself. And uh, there's uh, there's that's just how it is. On the other hand, this vehicle here has uh, a differential in the back, and uh, I'm going to try to show that to you, but uh, if we uh, see, if I rotate this wheel, notice if I'm rotating this rear wheel backwards, and the other opposite wheel is turning the opposite direction. Now notice it is turning in approximately the uh, same amount or the same speed that I'm turning this other wheel. What the purpose of a differential is in a vehicle is to allow the varying of the speed of the left versus the right tire depending on what, when, whenever you're turning. When a car is turning, the inside wheels are rotating at a, at a uh, slower speed than the outside wheels because the outside wheels are traveling faster or traveling a longer, longer distance than the inside wheels. Um, and because of that, there's a difference in speed between the inner wheels and the outer wheels. And on a, on a vehicle, you need something to allow the power to be transferred to both wheels, but at different speeds to match 
the the turn and uh, the whole thing of a, of a of a differential gearbox in you know on the axle is what allows that to happen uh, ultimately it's basically just a gearbox that splits the power between the two wheels so that one wheel can turn faster than the other and not call not do any kind of axle wrap or axle binding in toy vehicles that doesn't really matter you're always on a surface you know whether it's dirt asphalt uh, whatever the cars are light enough that you won't have anything like axle wrap or anything like that These are both four-wheel drive vehicles, but one has uh, one has what's essentially straight axles, and the other one has uh, differentials. Um, in the case of this particular one, this uh, kind of bare chassis, it has uh, what's essentially a straight axle. If I rotate it, you can see it rotates. Uh, you know, rotates uh, both wheels go in the same direction. Same with the front. You know, so. You know this. Uh, you know has everything to allow it to turn, but uh, it's more or less a straight axle all the way through. But in the case of this one, which is really a unique, uh, really a unique RC vehicle, you don't really see this. Um, this is one of the few that I found like this. Is that uh, it actually has a differential up front, like this, and one in the rear like that, and it's hard to it's hard to show. But there's actually there 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 is actually um, there's actually power shaft that uh, you can I don't know if I can show it to you very good but uh, see right right there that's a power shaft that uh, runs both the front and the rear so it essentially has a uh, it essentially has a straight hookup between front and rear there's no uh, there's no um, there's no center differential or anything, so it's not it's not all-wheel drive, but it is four-wheel drive driven by a single motor um, in the rear, and um, and uh, all the wheels uh, you know all the wheels get get power from that motor, um, and both front and the rear both have differentials, so uh, you won't like I said you won't see that very often um, in uh, toy RC vehicles. I got lucky and found this. Um, it uh, like I said, it's a it's fairly uh, fairly unique uh, vehicle in that regard. Okay, well, uh, so uh, so let's say you uh, let's say you're at a, let's say you're at a thrift store or yard sale or you know something like that. You're digging in a junk pile and uh, you happen to find a an RC vehicle or whatnot. How do you know if it's any good or not? Uh, how do you know if it's going to work for your needs or if there's something broken on it that uh, you then have to decide well do I want to take this and you know just tear it apart and have a bunch of parts which can be useful for uh, junk body tile style projects <laughs> or uh, do, do you just want to leave it as, as the trash that it is or leave it behind and you know look for something else well you know it's fairly easy and most of it has to do with just feeling and hearing so uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's take our let's take our basic uh, nice uh, blue vehicle here because it's kind of like the kind of the simplest of, of them all, um, and I'll you know I'll show you what uh, what you can do in order to you know inspect it uh, before you even you know purchase or take it home. So uh, first thing you want to do is just. Uh, you know, kind of look at it. Kind of look at it. See if there's any, uh, you know, any broken or missing parts or anything on this one. Uh, I didn't notice it when I picked it up, but I probably, if I did, I probably didn't care. Um, it's actually one of the, you know, I can't really show it to you, but there's a couple, sh you know, fake shock spring type things on the back here. One of them's actually kind of missing. Um, not a big deal. It can probably be repaired if it, you know, if you had to or something. Not a big deal. But what I'm more interested in is what does the drive system sound and feel like? So all I do is I just look at it and you know I take a look and you know I may note make note of certain other things you know like I'll try to uh, read you know inside the battery compartment like how much you know how many how, how much voltage did it take and in this case it uh, took either a NICAD or a nickel metal hydride uh, battery pack and it was at six volts you know so I know that it uses six volts it's got a six volt motor you know that's uh, helpful information to know but then I just grab it you know grab one of the wheels and rotate it and you can feel in your fingers 
and you can hear, if you can hear this, you can hear the uh, gear train. And as you rotate it, you can feel the gears as they mesh, and you can listen to it, and that'll give you an idea of whether the you know whether the gear train is in any good shape if if it's if there's something wrong with it if it's you know you know it's missing a tooth or something you'll feel it you might even hear it um it's it'll 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 be it'll be kind of obvious and uh you know it'll also you know you can also listen to it and the other thing is is as this rotates it's actually turning the motor and you don't hear really anything from the motor, but if the motor bearings were bad or something like that, you know, they were dry or something, you might hear it squeal a little bit. And, uh, you know, if you do hear something like that, don't necessarily discount it because you can take those motors out and replace them if you had to. Uh, most of them just use fairly common off-the-shelf motors that, you know, you can buy surplus, buy them brand new, whatever, pull them out of another RC vehicle, you know, pull the uh, pull the gear off, pop it onto another one, and stick it in, and uh, you know, be just fine. So you know, don't don't uh, you know, if you hear something like that, very rare in that situation. But if you do, you know, it's uh, not something. It's not the end of the world or anything. The other mechanism I always look at is, of course, the steering. I want to know if does it actually work. And the best way is, you got here. You know, you probably all know what this is. It's a, it's the centering mechanism. You know, keeps, uh, you know, keeps it whenever it returns. You know, keeps it centered. So, most of these vehicles, they just, they don't have what, are, what is called proportional steering, meaning, whenever the radio control is turned by just a slight amount, the wheels turn by a slight amount. Most of them just have, you know, simple on-off, bang-bang type steering, full left, full right, or forward, um, and that's what this one in this case most likely does. But I can rotate it, and I can see that when I let go, it springs back. There's a spring return mechanism inside, um, and that's all good. It's, you know, I don't feel anything weird. I don't, uh, you know, nothing like that. The other thing to do is to look at the tires, you know, just uh, as you rotate it. You know, take a look at the profile of the tire, just, you know, against, uh, say, a light... Uh, you know, a light wall, you know, a white wall or something, and uh, take a look at the profile of the tire, see uh, if there's any kind of like major flat spots, you know, if this car had been sitting for a long while on a shelf or, you know, been mashed or something for a long while in the heat or whatnot, it might have a, uh, might have a divot in the tire, and, uh, you know, if it's big enough, that can cause problems, you know, it's going to cause it, you know, an issue, you know, issue making it go forward, you know, you know, you might you might be able to you might be able to reform the tire, or you might be able to put a new tire on, but uh, it's just something to, to keep in mind. And the other thing is also to see if it wobbles or anything. You know, if it's got a bent axle or some other kind of problem of that nature, um, and do that for the front and for the rear. You know, just take a look at it and uh, you know see how well you know does it spin smoothly, especially if it's undriven like this. You know, yeah, it seems that one spins real good, and that one does too, and. You know, there's no, uh, you know, these spin true, spin spin freely. This is actually a pretty good car with the exception of that one uh, fake shock, and I'm not going to worry about that, you know. It's not really that big of a deal. So, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's basically how you inspect these vehicles before you take them home, before you make that decision and bring them on home with you for your uh, ro next robot platform. All right, well, that does it for this video. In future videos, we're going to be looking at the internals of these toy RC vehicles. We'll be checking out their mechanisms, their electronics, and how we can interface with them in order to build a functioning robot for experimentation purposes. So be sure to check that out later. If you have any questions or ideas for projects, or you just want to share something, please leave me some comments down below. And if you're liking these videos, Please consider subscribing. Please share this with your family, friends, neighbors, ferrets, dogs, cats, weevils. I don't care. Just let them know what I'm doing here. And hey, I'll also take your likes. By the way, I also have a Patreon, so if you want to check that out, give it a shot. Until next time, remember, keep calm and keep junking. Thank you. <laughs>
weevils, especially the weevils, 